receiving from men demands the following please write number one you must know the value and the role of men in manifesting spiritual realities in your life receiving from men demands the following number one you must know the value and the role of men in manifesting spiritual realities koinonia is excelling today not just because god said so but because of the ministry of faithful loyal men men in various ramifications number two receiving from men demands that sometimes you may look beyond your frailties and limitations it demands that you may look you look beyond their frailties and limitations second corinthians 4 7 there is this treasure in earthen vessels sometimes the man who holds the key to your destiny may be an angry person an angry boss a temperous person he will insult you from head to toe before he approves a one week leave for you it is amazing that sometimes you would think that because of these kinds of men God should replace him and give orders and yet God does not he will still keep his grace his influence his power with these men even though some of them are cyruses God will still live it that way receiving from men demands the following number three humility and adaptation you want to receive from men as the final arrival point of spiritual realities you must have humility and you must have the grace to adapt I learned from Dr. Mike Mudok that adaptation is proof of honor you must learn to adapt there are men who have the power to help you but they can make you sit in their office for seven hours you will be annoyed you will be grumbling you'll be saying what is this who does this man think he is you leave the office and see one recommendation can help you humble yourself and stay they are not God but they can be used by God sometimes we need to be careful this issue of are you God I understand what we are saying God can help people but I'm showing you this system of conversion in the spirit don't fight men unnecessarily you will lose at various fronts are we together humility and adaptation there are times you need to just humble yourself ah, it's been five hours we kept you here sorry we've been in at a meeting and while the devil wants to put offense in your heart you say no I know the value that this person's presence can bring there are many people today whose 10 years would have been reduced to one day if only they adapt they, 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 they were able to to adapt to the ministry of men hallelujah frailties and limitations then humility and adaptation humility and adaptation humility listen to me don't try to receive from men that have what you need at your own terms it is pride are we together you want a job but you want it when you have the time and you say this man is a CEO uh, sometimes great people can even play with you and say when is your free time and instead of you to quickly say no 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 sir please whatever time you give me you say well uh, since you have asked and you don't know that that question is the interview that question you see is the interview and you fail it woefully and go back calling it favor say can you imagine the man even asked me oh, just one question how can a man humble? that means there's really something on my life and they never call you again are we together you shouted that you receive power and what wisdom when you see great people don't worship them but don't trivialize the sacrifices that have brought them where they are I leaned over in the living room in the afternoon just relaxing and reflecting on the teaching and I was just scrolling a few channels and I stumbled across a channel that was showing I think the video a, do, a, a, a documentary some film that was acted on Baba Deboe and it caught my attention I watched a few just a few for a few but it really impacted me so much 
when I got in later on, I got into the room, I was thinking, I said, my God. I mean, you could sense the anointing from that, 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 um, that movie. I said, look at such a great man. From the movie, I saw some of the challenges that that man went through. And I said, today, people will just get up and think he got there by luck. 85 years. Over how many years of serving the Lord? Listen. Never downplay the sacrifices that brought glory to men. Your boss may be an angry man, but he was not promoted by luck. Are we together now? Yes. This man, who knows, he's just lucky. The man even sounds like a dummy. Yet he was working in the civil service before you were born. What made the government or what made whoever to elevate him to that point? Believers always like to downplay the sacrifices of people. You see a great preacher and you say he's just lucky. It's an attitude of failures and losers. Nobody has sustainable result by mistake. I'm sharing with you irrefutable principles. Don't. The fathers of faith, my goodness. As I grow in ministry, and as God continues to do what he's doing in our lives around the world, I am humbled by the kind of stamina that these fathers had. Because many of them were pioneers of these realms. Remember my teaching followers of them? Many of them were pioneers. Even though they had the people before them, it was not in the manner and the fashion they followed. How did they survive the persecutions? How did they survive the things they had to endure, bringing them to that point of grace? Some of us got born again in their churches, their branches. How did they believe God to expand that far? So how do you trivialize that? A man who through his ministry like rain had bonke, over 100 million souls came to Jesus. 100 million recorded salvations, minus the ones that did not get documented. How do you casualize and trivialize such a ministry and you've not even won 50 people confirmed hallelujah a great chain maybe an eatery somewhere and you enter the eatery and you say these people shame on them i'm so disappointed look at the building it's not even nice the person who is speaking does not even have the money to finish the payment of the food you will eat it He's hoping that his friends will help them. And sometimes the owner comes and says, okay, um, good afternoon, can we help you? Are you the owner? Look, let me tell you, I'm, it's just because I, there's nowhere to... <sighs> Respect greatness. Respect greatness. Greatness in ministry. Greatness in business. Greatness in governance. Respect greatness. It is one of the ways to receive from men. I will never dishonor true greatness when I see it. Because behind that crown, you have learned again and again here, are scars, testaments of endurance. Testaments of endurance. Some of these great people may not be as smart as you think they are, but there is a covenant before God that has brought them to that point of grace. Do not ignore it. Do not ignore it. Do not ignore it. Hallelujah. I remember one day I was passing a particular state and they took me around and I saw a very large property in acres and they said it belonged to so 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 ministry. And I just nodded my head. I said, these people again. You see this grace. Whereas someone can be struggling for one plot of land and never get it. And there are people who have a grace for territory. Every grace you ignore, you have shut the door to receiving it. Receiving from men demands humility and adaptation. Let me give you a final thought on the ministry of men. Receiving from men demands gratitude and honor. I will draw me to you and you've heard countless testimonies here of the value of gratitude. Let me challenge you this week. Find something to tell any boss or any superior you have 
If it's a gift, buy a gift and tell them thank you. Genuinely, don't do it pretentiously. Take this as a prophetic instruction. Go to your office tomorrow with a gift. Apostle, you are putting me in an I hate that man. You will remain there. You want promotion. Humble yourself. Sir, thank you. This is a little token. I bought you a basket of oranges and this. Just to say thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for giving my sister a job. And the person laughs and said, I'm busy. We're in a meeting. That's all right. Thank you. God bless you. And you say, you see, he didn't even acknowledge me. Don't worry. Do it. Go and tell your superior thank you. Tell your spouse thank you. Don't wait for a Valentine. Tell your spouse thank you. Genuinely and sincerely. Tell your children. Tell your parents. Tell your loved ones. Tell anyone who has been a major contributor or can be used by God. A man of God who's, who has impacted your life sincerely. Tell them thank you. You can sow into their lives, do it. You can not sow into their lives, send a text with gratitude. Apostle say, I should thank you. Thank you for being one of the people who blessed me. He would delete it with anger and block your line. Say wisdom. Please shout it, Koinonia. Say wisdom. Don't do that. When you are appreciating people, don't compare them. Take out time to appreciate them uniquely for what they stand for. You do it and watch the testimonies that happen after this. And don't forget to tell God himself, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son. Leaving your Spirit, your work on earth is done. When I meet with my leaders, I always start by telling them thank you. When I meet with the workers, I start by telling them thank you. Whether here, Canada, UK, US, doesn't matter. Thank you. You want to enjoy the ministry of men? Learn to say thank you. Don't just say thank you when you are given gifts. Even after that. I think there's a Yoruba strategy, let me borrow it now, where you say thank you the night and by the next day, you say thank you again. Powerful strategy. Double it even. Do your own for three days. Thank you. Then say thank you. Then say, I wish I didn't have to do this, but I'm too grateful to be silent. Thank you again, sir. Ah! Man says, who is this? This is my secretary. I found my secretary. No application. Thank you. They do an interview for you when you are done. Don't frown your face and say, are you done? They say, go. Thank you. I'm teaching you as simple as what I'm saying is, it has worked in my life like magic. Thank you. To God, thank you. To men, thank you. To those under, those who are your contemporaries, those above you. Receiving from men demands honor, demands gratitude. Those of you who are going to receive palliatives after service, I hope you will say thank you. Yeah, listen to me. The church is a place of training. If I don't say this, some of you, where's my own? You just carry it and turn. And, it, it doesn't hurt the giver. The giver gives because they are blessed. Thank you. Many Christians are very bad at saying thank you. Bad at communicating honor. Learn this as a principle. But just obey this prophetic instruction. Do it in your office this week. You have contemporaries. Order a meal for three or five of them who are in your office. Just go to, to work and drop the meals and say, I was in church and we were challenged to do this. And here are the meals for all of you. Don't choose the ones you like. Do it for everybody, including the one that fought you by the weekend. Do it. Someone say, no, 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 no. Who knows what they put in this? Don't worry. You just do it. Someone will sit down and look at you and say, this is it. This person, for doing this, it's not about the food. It's about the thoughtfulness. They will mark your kindness. The day you are in need, that's when you will know the value of men. Can I tell you? One of the ways you know that you have commanded the attention of men 
is that they will show up the day you need them. The day men, you are in need and no man shows up is a testament that you have ignored this. There are some of you, God forbid, not to make you sad, but if there is a bereavement in your family or there's something you are sick or some challenge, nobody shows up for you. Nobody. Your birthday, everybody forgets it because you spent your life closing the door through offense, through competition, through jealousy, through whatever it is, nobody shows up for you. You're a preacher, nobody's there to help you. How are you? How is your health? How is it? No, you're not influencing anybody. Manifesting spiritual realities. We are here today because of God. But the final bus stop was the ministry of men. Whilst we are here, there is a team of faithful, able people scattered across the globe, preparing for our Sound of Revival conferences, laboring day and night, many of them following right now. Men, you are as powerful as the men that God brings around. If I'm not in Koinonia for one year, you will not stop being edified. The only thing you will miss is my unique contribution. But there are faithful men built by God, forged from the furnace, forged from fire. Men. Teaching at the school of ministry, men. Able to do the things that we're doing for the kingdom, men. There are tens of thousands of people following online now. Potentially hundreds of thousands and even millions will be listening to this message tonight and in the days to come. That is happening through the ministry of men. You've been seated, but there are wonderful people moving around doing this. There are security operatives all across this auditorium securing lives, securing property. Men. In the multitude of men is a king's honor. I repeat, in the multitude of men, in the multitude of men, you are as powerful as the men that believe in you, not the few that do not believe in you. You are as powerful that the, as the men. The reason why Zuckerberg is a billionaire today is because we believe in him and his vision enough to patronize that business perpetually till he scaled his business to a point of wealth. Your business is at the mercy of men, not just God alone. Your ministry is at the mercy of men. Ladies and gentlemen, you are not just here tonight because you believe in Jesus. You are also here because you believe in the vessel he's using. That's why you left your house. That's why our international guests travel from around the world literally every week. There are people coming from around the world every two, two weeks, every month at least in this place right now. Don't tell me men do not matter. The final arrival point of everything that leaves heaven, it comes through men. Let me recap for one last time. The keys that transport realities from the spirit. Number one, contend for light. Number two, press into the realm of consciousness and conviction. And that happens through meditation. Number three, mix the truth you know with faith. Faith meaning obedience. Obedience in all its ramifications. Obedience as value. Obedience as wisdom. Number four, engage in spiritual warfare. The realm of the spirit controls the physical realm. When you settle things in the realm of the spirit, the spirit of God can find free course through men, through systems and structures. Finally, expect and prepare for the ministry of men. Take it half for me. Your life is at the mercy of the man who chooses to partner with the realm of the spirit for your manifestation. When we call God Ebenezer, when we call him Jaira, when we call him all the names that we call him, it is because when he stretches his hands from heaven, his hand will enter through a man to finally reach to you. The person today who God will use to lift you financially is on earth. The person through whom God will anoint you 
and set you apart from an extraordinary ministry is already around. The destiny helper you have been praying for is not about to be born. Is most likely born. God wants to bring glory through our lives. God wants to lift us and honor us. And God gave me an assignment to show you tonight how to manifest spiritual realities. This is how God helped this man standing before you. I read this from books. I listened to men who had capacity and results. And I'm glad I did listen. Ultimately, I listened to the word of God and to the voice of the Spirit. Today, look what God has done. It is to the glory of his name. It is the same. There is absolutely nothing the devil can do about it. These are irrefutable principles. As I saw the photos of some of the things that were putting together just to be a blessing to people. Aside from, do you know that I was told the registrations for the agricultural project, we just wanted a few people, but there were about 5,000 plus applications. I said, my God, what do we do? For the support for businesses, we're about 4,000 people. What takes a man from nothing to where you can experience the help of God? We don't know everything. We don't have everything yet. But there are some things he has shown us mercy in. And out of the abundance of his help, I have brought you a strategy tonight. Are we together? You can convert everything in the spirit from prophecy and make it manifest. What you see today is not what you are trying to bring down from the spirit. It's what we brought down years ago. Tomorrow we'll show you what we are doing now. Because compared to where he's taking us, we're only a step out of the cave. Truly till the nations see Jesus. Be glorified. Be glorified. Hallelujah. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Hallelujah. Be glorified. Please rise up on your feet. Be glorified. South African version. One prayer on your part and then I speak over you. Father, everything you have declared in scripture, this is the season where I want to see it manifest in my life. Go ahead and obtain grace. Obtain grace to contend for light. Koinonia, you are praying. Obtain grace to contend for light. Obtain grace to rise through meditation to a realm that is beyond mental ascent, a realm of conviction, persuasion, consciousness. Obtain grace to mix the things that you hear with faith, obedience value putting the word to work satisfying the conditions that commit god to speak in your life obtain grace to engage in the place of prayer until you settle scores in the spirit word of the arsenals of darkness mandated to fight your influence your relevance the purposes of God in your life.
Come on, are you praying? Salike barakatos kabraga barantos yata. Finally, pray for discernment to be able to engage with men. Destiny actualization is men dependent. Excelling in ministry is men dependent. Excelling in business is men dependent. You are as powerful as the men God bring to your life. You are as mighty as the men that stand with you. Stand for you. Stand by you. Your company is as powerful as the men who need you. The men who patronize your products and services. As a man of God, you are as powerful and relevant as the men who are willing and open to receive of the grace of God and the spiritual value that is invested in your life. Don't downplay men. It is not good for a man that he should be alone. When you are alone with no men, your life is not good. Your ministry will not be good. Your business will not be good. Someone pray. Hallelujah. I'm about to speak over your life. The Bible says the Lord gave the word. He says great was the company of them. The Lord gave the business idea. Great was the company of them. The Lord founded the ministry. Great was the company of them. The Lord brought the vision, brought the project. Great was the company of them that came to stand. In ancient times, if kings conquered a land, they would take the men. The men helped them to expand their influence. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm tempted to lead you to one prayer. Please, I'd like you to cry and say, Lord, this week, the men sent by God to make prophecy finally manifest. Lord, bring them by your mercy. Go ahead and pray. Bring them by your mercy. Bring them by your mercy. Bring them by your mercy. The men my business need, the men needed in my ministry, the men needed in my family, the men needed in my destiny, the men needed for my products, my services, the men needed for my vision. By your mercy, bring them, bring them. They are on earth, they are around, they are willing to help. Bring them, oh God. The men needed to help me secure a visa, bring them, oh God. The men needed to help me scale my education, bring them. The men needed to help me with my housing issue. I need your help. Your house is a place of help. Send the help from his sanctuary. That happens through men. Come through for me. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my head. My God, let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Send men, send voices that have the ears of my helpers. In Jesus' name I pray. I stretch my hands towards you in the name of Jesus. And I want you to receive this prophetic word. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. The grace that backs everything I have taught you today. That empowers you to walk in keeping and see it manifest. May that grace rest upon you. The grace to contend for light. Receive it in Jesus' name. The grace that supplies the discipline to meditate until scriptures become spirit and life to you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace that empowers you to obey and to obey completely. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The energizing of the spirit to contend in the place of prayer until you birth and manifest victories. I release that grace upon you. The grace that brings men, that draws men from all the 36 states in this nation, 
the continents in the, the nations that make up this continent and the continents of the earth wherever your help is through men may God gravitate it to your destiny no more delay of prophecy over your life Koinonia hear me no more delay of prophecy over your life let it manifest speedily speedily regardless the economic turmoil that is sweeping across the nations of the earth I pray for you the men who will put you in a position of advantage to be immune from this financial holocaust may God send them to your life the men who will announce what you carry in the name of Jesus Christ without struggle God will bring them to your life And I pray for you, anybody who has left your life by demonic manipulation, they should not have left. They were helpers and the devil created a scenario and took them out of your life. I return them by prophecy to your life. I return them by prophecy to your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me, please. No Jesus, no life. No Jesus, no life. You reject Jesus, you reject life. You embrace Jesus, you embrace life. You embrace Jesus, you embrace continuity. You embrace lifting, you embrace deliverance. You embrace healing, you embrace exaltation. It is for this reason that Jesus gave his all and his everything. I'm praying for someone right now that you have never made a genuine decision for Jesus. Do not let us close this service without you running to Jesus. I'm going to count one to five. Someone must have been impacted by this message and he's saying, Apostle, I want to make this decision truly. For someone you are saying, I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. I'm counting one to five. Run pack your Bibles, your whatever it is, your bags, everything you came to church with. Don't allow anyone to come before you. Leave your seat and come. I'm counting one to five. I'm running, I'm running, I'm running to the mercy seat. I'm running, I'm running. Two, are you coming? Come. Let's celebrate them as they come. If you know today that if Jesus comes, you are going to hell, come and join them. If you know today you are not sure of salvation, that if the trumpet sounds, you are going straight to hell, come and join them. Don't cheat your destiny and don't waste your destiny. Now today is the day of salvation. The Bible is very clear as to that. Please come. Jesus is able to give you a new beginning. There's no point shying away. There's no point pretending. Not when love is around. Not when mess is around. The Bible says to come boldly before the throne of grace. And for all who are falling online, connecting from all our expressions, make sure that you open up your heart to receive salvation. It is a gift. A gift that is received by faith. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming. I salute your courage. It is a noble thing to make Jesus Lord of your life. The wisest decision that any man can make in this side of God's kingdom. You're joining them. Thank you, my sister. Please join them very quickly. If you're joining them, come quickly. I'm about to lead them to pray. Lift your right hand if you can, high above your head. Say this after me as loud as you can. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it again. Say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I love you with all my heart. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive you into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power 
of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I am a child of God, washed by the blood of the Lamb. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for the gift of these precious ones who have come to the cross. I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, based on the authority of Scripture, that your sins are forgiven. And in the name of Jesus, I call you this moment, bona fide recipients of the life of God. I call you the righteousness of God in Christ, recipients of his life. The grace to live the victorious Christian life from tonight, let it be released upon you. In the name of Jesus, you go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Please let me request that you follow our counselors for just a minute or two. They are waving the placard. Let's appreciate them as they move. They will have a word with you very quickly for a minute or two. And then you return to your seat. Is this the best that you can do, Koinonia? Hallelujah. Thank you for your patience so far. We are fasting on Sunday, Sunday next week. Um, we are fasting. You can break anything. Children can break from 12 or 2. Um, adults, for the sake of, is maybe you can break, let's say, 3 or 4, because I know some persons. Let's do 3, um, 4, because we are, most people will be here already. So those who can stretch through, why not? So we are fasting. Don't forget. Um, the prayer points by Saturday night. Look to all our social media platforms and make sure you connect to all our social media platforms. We ask you to connect because we're family, it keeps us connected, and then we continue to send all and any updates. So make sure if you're not connected to any of our social media platforms, connect and invite others to be part of it, and the Lord will bless you whilst you do that. So remember, we're fasting by night on Saturday. The prayer emphasis will be sent and then you have the time to pray and then come to church. Invite as many people as you can to come and experience God. Have you been blessed tonight? Please go back and listen to this message again and share it with as many for their spiritual edification. Hallelujah. One more time, thank all of you who are here for the first time. Thank you very much for making the time. This is Koinonia and the Lord will do you good even from tonight's meeting and hence in Jesus' name. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you on Sunday.